Welcome back to Noir Alley. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. A few weeks ago, I showed Double Indemnity and discussed the vital contribution writer Raymond Chandler made to that landmark film and the bitterness he felt over his treatment by co-writer and director Billy Wilder. The fact is, Chandler hated Hollywood, and his unhappy experience at Paramount convinced him that nothing good would ever come from his prickly relationship with the picture business. But then, in 1944, RKO made today's picture, Murder My Sweet, based on Chandler's 1940 novel, Farewell My Lovely. At this point, Chandler's reputation as a novelist was based on a mere four books, two of which had been bought for the movies, only to have the studios dump his private eye, Philip Marlowe, and replace him with other fictional detectives. And RKO's The Falcon Takes Over and Fox's Time to Kill, where Mike Shane became the featured shamus. Those B pictures borrowed Chandler's stories, but none of his signature style. And using Chandler's books for their plots made about as much sense as having Rita Hayworth only sing off camera. It's missing the point entirely. Chandler's writing is all about Philip Marlowe. His descriptive language, his wise-cracking humor, his cynical attitude. Fortunately, RKO, specifically Executive Vice President of Production Charles Corner, wasn't ready to give up on Chandler. The studio boss was a fan of the Marlowe stories, and since RKO already owned the rights to Farewell, My Lovely, it provided the sketchy basis for The Falcon Takes Over in 1942, Corner used it as a springboard for some talented artists ready to jump from B pictures to top-of-the-line A's. Writer-producer Adrian Scott and director Edward Dimitrik, who'd made 18 pictures over the previous eight years, many wartime propaganda pieces like Hitler's Children and Behind the Rising Sun. Dimitrik was champing at the bit to show what he could do with a real budget, name actors, and a band of creative collaborators. Much of the visual flourish he'd display in this film was gleaned from an earlier RKO movie, Orson Welles' masterpiece, Citizen Kane, which is ironic because if history has remembered Charles Corner at all, it's as the man who fired Orson Welles at RKO, proclaiming the studio's new motto, showmanship instead of genius. Now this does not make Corner a Philistine. No less an artist than Jean Renoir called him an extraordinary man and wished he could have made 20 pictures with him at RKO. Corner was, in fact, credited with pulling the studio back from bankruptcy when he took over as RKO's general manager in 1942. He also, in a way, saved Claire Trevor. Hmm, you've got a nice bill for a private detective. By the end of the 30s, she was an established star, having made a terrific impression in a pair of late 30s classics, Dead End and Stagecoach. But over the next few years, she was relegated to fourth or fifth build parts, mostly in forgettable westerns. Corner felt Trevor wasn't being used properly, so he did something about it. You could say that RKO made Farewell, My Lovely primarily as a showcase for the new Claire Trevor, an insouciant and wonderfully wicked femme fatale. She even collaborated with costume designer Edward Stevenson on her spectacular outfits, conjuring up an image that became her sartorial signature in the many noir films that followed. Barbara Stanwyck wasn't the only dangerous dame making an impression in 1944. Charles Corner also was listening when Dick Powell griped in the press that he'd grown too old for any more boyish musical comedy roles. As long as I'm on the payroll here, yeah, let's understand each other. I don't work by push buttons. Powell was increasingly restless at Paramount, especially after he was turned down for the part he most wanted, as scheming insurance salesman Walter Neff in Double Indemnity. Powell felt he could have played it just as well as Fred McMurray, and that it would have opened up new opportunities for him as a leading man. Scott and Dimitrik, however, were dead set against Powell. They'd envisioned someone tougher and more laconic. Remember, that Mitchum fellow was still at this point a B player at RKO. Corner demanded that they have Powell make a screen test. And as a result, 
Corner offered the multi-picture deal to Powell, which changed the course of the actor's career. Scott and Demetric ended up loving his performance, as did Raymond Chandler, who at first hated the idea of a song and dance man playing Marlowe. Now, adapting Philip Marlowe to the screen correctly was no small task. Adrian Scott gambled on 33-year-old John Paxton, a screenwriter with only one credit, a shaggy dog B picture called My Pal Wolf, which was Scott's previous project before this big step up. Paxton clearly knew what made Chandler's prose special. He streamlined, somewhat, the tangle of plot threads, retained the smart mouth banter while inventing some of his own, and kept the sinister characters spinning around and the action moving at a brisk clip. As Chandler himself advised, when your plot hits a snag, have somebody come through the door with a gun. You'll get plenty of that in today's film, which features a terrific supporting cast, some of them armed. Otto Kruger, Anne Shirley, Douglas Walton, Esther Howard, Miles Mander, and Man Mountain Mike Mazurki, all feature vividly in the proceedings. Originally made as Farewell, My Lovely, but retitled in honor of Dick Powell's new hard-boiled image, here is Murder My Sweet.